In this video, we're going to look at modeling with linear functions. We're going to first talk about the steps that are useful to do the modeling and for solving, and then we're going to build models from verbal descriptions, and then we're going to build systems from linear models. So the first thing we want to know when we're building this is what's changing, what is not changing. Sometimes it's appropriate to draw a picture, sketch a picture, a graph, define your coordinate system. And what I mean by that is that it doesn't have to be X and Y. It could be the number of pieces sold versus the cost being the Y axis would be cost and the X axis would be the number of pieces. You want to really read the problem. It's important to determine what's in the application problem. There's always going to be information that you may not need. So Read through the problem a couple of times. Maybe highlight things that you think might be important. And determine what you're going to label your variables. I probably won't use X and Y unless, you know, it's appropriate to. I would probably use C for cost and, and uh, M for modules. If I'm building modules, how many modules do I have and the cost of that. So I'd probably use C and M versus X and Y. Identify a solution from the pathway of what we're trying to find. This is checking and tracking your units. Make sure your units all align. Sometimes it helps to build the table, maybe find a formula that's going to be needed. When you're ready, after you've done all of that, you're going to want to write your, your, your formula or write your function. And then think about whether or not your answer that you came up with is reasonable, right? So... Don't just say, oh, I got the answer, move on. Think about, but wait, does that make sense? And then make sure that you use the appropriate units for your answer and answer in complete sentences when it's appropriate and necessary. So let's go through an example. A town's population has been decreasing at a constant rate. In 2010, the population was 5,900, and by 2012, the population had dropped 4,700. Assume this trend continues. Now we're going to use that to predict or model the population in 2016. So the things I want to really pay attention to that I'm going to highlight here is decreasing and constant. So decreasing means, and constant, the important I'm going to actually focus in on is constant. Constant means that it's going to be linear. And so I'm going to think about slope and it's decreasing. So it is decreasing. So I expect to have a negative slope. The other thing I'm going to pay attention to is I have 2010 and 5,900 and then in 2012, I have 4,700. And now I've got to decide what I want to use for variables and what's going to be appropriate for inputs and what's going to be appropriate for outputs. So I want to use year or n. So I want to use y for number of years or n for the number of years. And I am, may or may not use 2010 and 2012 as my inputs. I may decide that at zero, which is I'm going to say 2010 is my base time. So at year zero, my input is zero. My output is 5,900. That means my second ordered pair. Well, how many years is it from 2010 to 2012? That's two, 4,700. Or I may write this as the years, 2010, 5,900. And then I have 2012, 4,700. So I can use either or. I think I'm probably going to use the zero and the two. That way I can count how many years after 2010. So I'm going to use N equals the number of years after 2010. I'm going to use P of N to equal the population at N years after 2010. Now notice I am 
deciding what my variables are going to be and I'm, I'm labeling them. So now that I've decided what my variables are going to be and I labeled them, I'm going to need to find the equation. Because it's a constant rate and it's decreasing, I know this is a linear, so I need to find my slope. So M is just slope. So 5,900 minus 4,700 all over 0 minus 2. So in the numerator, I've got 1,200, and in the denominator, I have a negative 2. So I have negative 600. Now I'm just going to talk about what this means. I have a negative 600. What the heck does this mean? Well, remember, my population was the numerator, and my denominator was years. So what this is telling me is that I can interpret this as a decrease of 600 people per year. So each year, because the units here are population numbers in the numerator, and the units in the denominator are years after 2010, so it's a decrease of 600 people per year after 2010. So I just want to stop and talk about the units of the slope. The units of the slope are important. Now, I'm ready to then continue on with building the equation. So I have P of N, I'm going to use a modified point slope, is equal to a negative 600. And then I have my um, n minus my first ordered pair. Well, I'm going to use 0 and then plus 5,900. So I have negative 600 n plus 5,900. Now that is my equation. So that is actually the first part. So here's, um, well actually it's not even answering the first question. It is just literally setting up the function. So I'm going to go ahead and write this over here. P of n is equal to negative 600 plus 5,900. I'm just going to erase this so I can have the space to actually answer the question. So all I've done so far is found a linear equation that models this situation. So let me go ahead and erase this. Okay. Now, to answer the question, they want to know what is to predict the population based on this model, what it would be in 2016. Well, how many years has gone by from 2010 to 2016? It has been six years. So this tells me I'm going to evaluate this when n is equal to 6. So p of 6 is, oh, and I don't forget that n right there, is negative 600 n, where n is 6. So I'm going to put in 6 right there plus 5,900. And so I'm going to get 3,600, negative 3,600 plus 5,900 is 2,300. Now, what does that represent? Does it represent pickles or bananas? No. I'm going to answer the, the question in a full sentence with appropriate units. Let me go ahead and erase this. So the answer in... 2016, the population of the town is predicted to be 2,300 people. Now that is my answer. Full sentences. Application problems, answers should be in full sentences and it should have the appropriate units. Now, they want to know when the population is 0. So they want me to do this. 0 is equal to negative 600 n plus 5,900. So I'm going to subtract 5,900 from both sides. So I have negative 5,900 is equal to negative 600 n. Solving for n, I get 9.83 repeating. Okay, so... This doesn't make a lot of sense. How am I going to how am I going to answer there's 9.83 repeating years? Well, let's do a little bit of conversion, right? So, let's take this 0.83 repeating years and multiply by 12 so we get 12 months because it's 12 months. So, I'm going to multiply that 0.83 um, by 12. So, I can at least talk about it in terms of months. 
And so that part is 10 months. So now I can talk about it as nine years and 10 months. So my answer, the population is predicted to reach zero people nine years and 10 months after 2010. Now that's one way to answer it. The other way to answer it is maybe say in the 10th month of the year 2019, the population is predicted to reach zero people. That's another appropriate way to answer that. All right, here's another one. A town has an initial population of 7,500. It grows at a constant rate of 2,500 per year for five years. Find the linear function that models the town's population at the beginning of t year t, where t is the number of years since the model began. So again, I'm going to go back up and I'm going to highlight the things that are important. Initial population, constant, grows 250 for five years. So I don't even have to do what I did where I've got ordered pairs. This one, I already know what my y part of my y-intercept is if I use y. Now t is what they're asking me to use for the... Um, number of years. Instead of using n, I'm going to use t because they're telling me to use t here. I'm still going to use p for population. So I have p of, let me use a pen. Let me go back to my pen. p of t is equal to. Now this is the rate of 2,500 per year. So remember how we talked about the slope being important? That is the slope. That is the rate of change per year. So that's the slope. So 2,500 multiplied by t, because that's my variable, plus my initial population, which is 7,500. Now that one I can't write as a, a sentence. That is it. What would be a reasonable domain and range of the function p? Well, they're telling me that I have initial population, so that must mean that t, the domain, so the domain of p, a reasonable population would be at zero years, sort of the initial population, and we could go to infinity, right? And this town just keeps growing and growing and growing. Technically, it should stop at some point, or otherwise, you know, everybody would be in that town, right? But so reasonable, maybe a couple hundred years, but we'll use infinity. Range. Well, what is the lowest output of this? Well, the lowest output is 7,500. Or 7,500. And if time is going on in infinity, then technically this output would be going on in infinity. But again, at some point, you're going to have to max out. Billions, maybe? The whole world is just this one town. You know, it's got to stop at some point. Reasonable. Depends on resources and all that stuff. And that's not what this class is about at this point. So if I wanted to find the x and y intercepts, well... Because it is growing, I have no x-intercept. So I have no x-intercept. Because if I put this and set it equal to zero, I'm going to get t being a negative number, and that can't be part of my domain. Do I have a y-intercept? Absolutely. My y-intercept, however, my y-intercept, my pen to work... My y-intercept is 75,000 comma zero. Uh, if the function p is graph, find and, and interpret the slope. Oh, well, we already know that. We already did that. We know the slope is this. This is the slope. It is 2,500 per year um, increase. So it's a population increase of 25 population. So I should population increase. Let me just, just slap that in there. So then it's asking me, when will the output reach 10,000? So that is the output. So I'm solving for this. I'm doing 2,500 multiplied by t 
is equal to 75,000, or excuse me, not equals, but plus 75,000 is equal to 10, 100,000, 100,000. And so I've got T is equal to 10 years. So again, I want to answer this in a complete sentence. In 10 years, 10 years, the population for the town is predicted to be 100,000. What is the output after 12 years? Again, nice, easy. You're just going to do P of 12 and then answer that in a complete sentence. Take a look at the second one. And the newborn, it weighs 7.5. Nice, good size baby. The baby gains uh, one half of a pound a month for its first year. Now, if you are a pediatric person and you know all about this, this is just a model. <laughs> this may or may not be right. I'm just, this is just a model. It's just an example. So please don't put in the comments, well, that's not right. Okay, I get it. I get it. So let's find the important pieces of information. Initial weight, one half pound per month. So that tells me that I have my slope of 0.5 pounds per month and I have the initial. So my first part here is the Ruskin W of T is equal to 0.5 times T if T represents the months plus 7.5 is the initial. So once again, this is just a repeat of the previous one. So I'll let you go ahead and finish that off. We'll talk about it in class if you would like to. So a student has scores of 66.5, 68.25, and 73.75 on his first three tests. He needs to average at least a 72 to earn a C. What is the minimum score that the student needs on the fourth test to ensure a C? Well, this is a linear inequality. Well, what are we doing is we're doing 66.5 plus 68.25 plus 73.75 plus x, where x equals the test score for the fourth test. Now, since it's an average, we divide by the four scores, and we need this to be greater than or equal to 72. And then you're going to go ahead and solve for that. Don't forget to answer in full complete sentences. When you're solving systems of linear models, these are your three choices. We can have exactly one solution, we can have an infinite number of solutions, or we can have no solutions. So if we are looking to write a system of equations and identify the solutions, the first thing you want to do is figure out what is the input, what is the output. You also want to determine, lock that rotation, Determine the slope and y-intercepts of each model, and then find the solutions by setting one equal to the other or doing it by elimination, so substitution or elimination. When hiring for a new job, you are given two options, the base pay of $17,000 per year plus a commission of 12% on your sales, or you have a base salary of $20,000 a year and a commission of 5% of your sales. How much jewelry do you need to sell for option A to produce a larger income? Well, option A is this. is 17000 plus 12%, and then we're going to use S for sales. So S equals the amount sold. And option B is 20000 plus uh, and I should add a decimal, 0 0.05 of S. Now, I want option A to be the better one. So this is going to be linear inequality instead of a system. So I have 17,000 plus 0.12 S is greater than or equal to 20,000 
plus 0.05s. I'm going to bring everything to one side of the equals and then do the division as appropriate. So I'm going to, or inequality, I'm going to bring my s's to the left and I'm going to bring my 17,000 to the right. So I have 0.07s is greater than or equal to, and then I'm going to divide both sides by, or excuse me, subtract both sides by 17,000. So I have 3,000. And then I'm going to divide both sides by S. And so I've got S is greater than or equal to. I ended up with 42857.14. And this is money, so we're going to round to change. So the answer is 42,857. Don't forget to write this as an answer. So 4. Sorry, I wrote so. 4 option a to b a better um, income you would need to sell forty two thousand eight hundred fifty seven and fourteen cents actually you'd need to sell more than. So I want it strictly more than. Let me go back and make this strictly greater than. More than. And there's your answer. So again, same kind of thing. I'll let you go ahead and work that one out. And that's it. We can go over these in class if you would like. So that's it for this section. Nice, easy, quick section.